that we want to go to the next uh, special talk, Lunar Surface Activity by Collective Efforts Across the Nation. Dr. Wakata, the floor is yours. Thank you. I spoke in the morning, and uh, now we want to talk about um, Japan-wide collaboration. I'm really excited to be able to speak here with all the media present, and I'm really hoping that uh, this uh, session is going to be interesting for you. Now, JAXA has a vision for international space uh, exploration. We have already covered this in the morning. Let's do a quick recap. We want to expand the sphere of um, human activities and uh, contribute to the creation of uh, intellectual assets. Through international collaboration, we want to link with the uh, industry and uh, realize this plan. So LEO and ISS, and now we the sphere of our activities. And we have now the gateway plan by the US and the various countries uh, wanting to participate. And coordination is taking place. So we're talking about elliptic um, orbit, uh, 4,000 times 75,000 kilometers. And uh, Orion will be used. And for supply, rocket, unmanned rocket would be used. And the candidate is. Um, HTVX from Japan, the improved version. So we would go to the gateway and from the gateway to the surface of the moon. And uh, of course there is a um, unmanned rover, but also a manned rover, pressurized rover would be necessary so that people can stay on the surface. And uh, we may have to produce certain um, substances. And uh, from the gateway with the unmanned uh, supply vehicle, we can provide the supply to the lunar surface. And uh, that will lead to the full exploration of the moon. And uh, we can go beyond the gateway into Mars and I continue to expand the sphere of activity of the human beings. So this is uh, JAXA's vision of uh, international space exploration. And in the earlier session, we covered, um, for example, discussion by Koyama-san, Institute Electric, and also Tamura-san, iSpace, they all talked about um, spacecraft uh, industry or business. So we need to reach, the, reach there with a vehicle. And also, we need to create things such as um, factory um, locally, as the as I mentioned. We need to build something, live there, and also move around and uh, explore. These are the activities that would be necessary. And the idea is that uh, we need the support of um, all the entities in Japan. So we have um, ISS and other activities at JAXA. We are developing and operating um, space uh, crafts. And there are six things like this. We don't have expertise yet. So we need to build Team Japan nationwide cooperation. So when we have a manned exploration, we need a manned uh, pressurized rover. And this is the overview of the mission. And as I explained in the morning, we have a roadmap from 2029 to 2034. Five different phases of exploration is planned. And the five different regions will be covered. In 2029, rover will be um, put on the lunar surface. And the astronauts would go via the gateway and land on the moon. And after landing, 
astronauts will mount the rover and start exploring. They would stay for about a month. So 42 Earth days is the mission period. And during this period, crewed mission will continue. Astronauts will go return to Earth via the gateway, but uh, until the next set of astronauts arrive, the rover can continue to operate automatically. They have to move to the next location, and then rover would uh, safely reach the next location. And after that, we receive the new set of astronauts via the gateway, and uh, they can start operating the rover. And this uh, phase will be repeated five times, covering five different regions. Rover can be driven by people, but also has to operate on its own while there are no astronauts on the surface of the moon. So while the astronauts are there, they would um, drive the rover in these red dots. And uh, while the astronauts are not there, the rovers will have to drive on its own automatically to the next location. So what is the surface of the moon look like? What is the environment? It's very challenging. Space launch system rocket of the US would be used in this case and uh, we have some limitations. Even with the Japanese rocket from Tadegashima, we do have uh, restrictions in terms of the uh, space for the payload. Six tons per vehicle is the maximum. There is also strong vibration. And uh, once we launch and land on the lunar surface, again, the situation is very different from the surface of the Earth. It's harsher, and uh, physically and uh, geologically, there are craters, hills, and uh, steep hills, Legoris, which is very difficult to drive on, and the gravity is only about one six. There's hardly any air close to vacuum, and the uh, thermal environment is very harsh as well. Close to 300 uh, degrees difference between the hottest and the coolest time. The environment is very harsh and challenging, but we need to operate manned rover, and we need to build this rover. And today, I would like to invite a new team member for Team Japan, who is helping to do this with us. So, the 
This is a new teammate for the pressurized Land Rover. We have uh, Mr. Terashi, who is the vice president at Toyota Motors. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Terashi. I'm with Toyota Motors. I usually talk about cars, and today this is a JAXA symposium. I feel like I'm playing um, away from my home ground. I feel very nervous. Our first involvement with the space started with this uh, photograph. This was uh, 2012. Space Shuttle Endeavour was decommissioned, and it had to be carried from the Los Angeles airport to California Science Center. And uh, in this process, part of the way was helped by Toyota. We manufacture Tundra pickup truck in Texas, and this was only a short distance, but uh, we were very honored to have been part of this great job. Since integration, we have always wanted to do things for the good of humanity and for the good of society. That's been a corporate philosophy. And uh, we are extremely honored to have been given this opportunity to participate in the expansion of um, sphere of um, human activities. And also, this for an engineer, this is really a dream come true. Now, JAXA has given us a lot of parameters, and based on that, we are discussing the plans. I would like to share some of the features of this rover that we're discussing. This picture is just an image. In the end, there are so many different parameters, and we will have to keep changing uh, different aspects. And people say Toyota's cars don't look cool, but I think this rover looks really cool. So maybe we can apply the same design in the next uh, model of Land Cruiser. Now, in order to implement the mission on the lunar surface, rockets, gateway, various uh, types of equipment would be necessary. And uh, Toyota can contribute in this part, where people will have to ride the vehicle, in other words, rover. So we are studying uh, different possibilities with the rover. The rover has to continue to drive for six weeks on the surface of the moon. And inside the rover, the astronauts will have to be able to take off their suits and live as if um, it's a normal life. And uh, space-wise, uh, it's a little bit smaller than the smallest uh, room in Japan. And uh, on the outside, it's a little bit larger than two micro buses. The mission this time will last uh, 10,000 drive within 42 days in order to obtain sufficient energy. Uh, we are thinking of uh, uh, mounting the rover with um, Toyota-made next-generation fuel cell. And we would like to um, uh, make the rover run more than 1,000 kilometers with uh, one-time supply of uh, hydrogen. I understand that uh, a moon uh, daytime uh, will last two weeks on Earth and two weeks of night. So solar panel and power generation and storage of power uh, will have to be available. And equipment operation capability have to be available for the crew and safe uh, uh, safety of the crew has to be maintained. Toyota has been providing cars to uh, the worldwide users from 2014 
we have been successfully um, driving through five continents by knowing the roads the road will train on the driver and the driver will create better cars so based on our activities uh, we would like to develop uh, vehicles for the drivers who have to drive in the wild and, and there are people who, if, uh, who have to drive in the wild and um, failure, single failure could be lethal incident. So we would like the users to choose our car uh, for its quality, durability, and reliability. Of course, the environment is totally different from Earth to the moon. But uh, we have uh, been ensuring uh, the quality, durability, and reliability, and we can contribute to the development of the robot. Uh, quality, durability, and reliability. On top of that, uh, recently we often talk about uh, case technology. Conventionally, um, uh, most impor important things have been quality, durability, reliability. Uh, if there are real elements of the technology, a case is related to AI or connected technology and autonomous uh, driving. Uh, case technologies are sort of uh, virtual technology. So in order for the robot to successfully drive on the lunar surface, integrated uh, power of um, uh, quality, durability, reliability, plus case technologies are necessary. So Toyota needs to enhance uh, the in those uh, integrated capability uh, to provide uh, uh, ro robot. Now I would like to touch upon the fuel cell technology that uh, we would we are uh, providing. Uh, fuel cell technology is not a, a new technology. Uh, after 1965, uh, since Gemini uh, program, uh, Apollo, uh, space shuttle missions, hydrogen has been utilized as an energy source uh, in the fuel cell. Now, I'd like to talk about the mechanism of a fuel cell, as uh, you may know already, but let me explain briefly. A fuel cell works uh, on uh, the reaction of hydrogen and uh, oxygen, it generates power, and as, and as a result of reaction, only the water is uh, um, discharged. And um, oxygen and hydrogen are both gas, so if you store them in the tank, you can maintain uh, the energy source for a long period of time and transport them. And fuel cell is uh, lighter and smaller than li lithium uh, batteries. Um, in order to uh, drive uh, the necessary driving range, um, fuel cell uh, mass is uh, one fifth of the lithium ion, uh, lithium ba ion battery, and the volume is uh, twenty percent less. So we calculated the necessary energy uh, based on that. So hydrogen, oxygen, reaction, generate power, and uh, water coming out of that reaction can be utilized for cooling uh, water and drinking water. Uh, in this mission, uh, fuel cell can be an uh, optimum energy source. And if uh, through the mission, uh, if you discover water resources on the moon, and if a uh, human can utilize such water source, uh, we can uh, store and utilize uh, uh, energy stably in the uh, space. And maybe we can create a hydrogen-based um, society. Uh, the water generated from a fuel cell reaction, you can use water coming from this reaction. Toyota feels that this can be a good uh, model for building space 
uh, community. Uh, in order to realize a sustainable mobility society, Toyota feels that uh, hydrogen and fuel cell are imperative. We have uh, developed fuel cell technology. Uh, we would like to use that for Toyota cars, but not only that, I think we can use that for uh, uh, various mobility application and uh, driving units. And uh, we would like to hear the requests from many stakeholders and we would like to cooperate with them in research and development. And this time we are involved in the space development. It is um, space de for space de development. Uh, the mission is very uh, severe. We have to make sure that the crew go there safely and uh, return on Earth. Under uh, JAXA's leadership, um, Toyota has become a uh, part of the Team Japan. We are uh, very grateful, and we would like to face up to this uh, challenge. Thank you for your kind attention. Thank you. Uh, now I'd like to invite Wakata, Mr. Wakata and Mr. Terashi to have a uh, talk session. Uh, uh, let us invite uh, Mr. Wakata and Mr. Terashi on the stage. Mr. Terashi, looking forward to this dialogue. I was hoping that this will end quickly. I feel out of space. Uh, uh, what's this uh, picture? Well, this is the same slide I used in the very beginning. Let me uh, add uh, some more explanation. From uh, Los Angeles Airport to Science Center in the California, uh, Endeavor is being uh, towed. Uh, we, uh, well, the uh, Endeavor was being towed with uh, four tow tractors, but uh, the bridge was not strong enough to uh, withstand that weight. Uh, so we uh, asked for help. So we uh, chose Tundra, which is the biggest pickup truck of uh, Toyota. On the catalog, it says that uh, 4.5 tons can be uh, carried, but uh, total with the uh, uh, carrier, it was 135 tons altogether. We couldn't, pra did, we couldn't do a practice run. Uh, it was supposed to start at 8 p.m., and I was there, uh, very antsy. Um, uh, it started. The towing started at uh, 10 p.m. and uh, it took four minutes to successfully go through the bridge. I was uh, uh, very, very relieved. That's wonderful. I was watching this on the TV and this picture uh, gives me a very good memory. Space Shuttle Endeavour. Uh, uh, astronaut Mr. Doi and Mr. Mori were on Endeavour as well. So this is a very familiar uh, spacecraft to us. Uh, I it was uh, on board Space Shuttle twice. In the, on the first round, um, we had to capture the um, experimental module with this spacecraft. And then a very important mission for Endeavour. And I was very proud to see that Japanese car was uh, chosen to tow this uh, very important spacecraft when it's retired. Back then on the internet, uh, there were some uh, complaints about uh, why are we letting Japanese uh, uh, pickup trucks to tow <laughs> uh, the Endeavour. But uh, if you look at the um, carefully the image, it says born in America. So this 
uh, was produced in <laughs> Texas uh, a plant. So Amer U.S. Uh, uh, workers at, uh, placed this on the truck. So proud of uh, being using the U.S. Uh, produced Toyota truck. Uh, this is a picture of uh, Wakata-san and Kirobo, Kiro the space uh, robots. This was in 2014, I think. I, it was, I, I was assigned as a commander of ISS, and I talked with a Kirobo robot. This was the first attempt for the first, uh, in the world, uh, you know, the dialogue between uh, astronauts and the robots in the space. Uh, so I think uh, we have been having this uh, link with Toyota since a uh, long time ago. Uh, this robot project, when uh, we were approached, we were already working on a, uh, a space pro a concept. Uh, some young employees were uh, talking about the possibility of uh, doing something in a space and actually a joint uh, study and discussion started last year. Compared to ordinary employees and the project members uh, seem having more fun. So uh, when we uh, um, uh, publicized this project internally uh, in the company, I don't know how to um, offer position for the project uh, members, pro project team. Next image. In the morning session, JAXA, IS, IS, uh, uh, Professor, uh, the, the uh, researcher Kubota talked about Hayabusa 2. Hayabusa 2 touched down on Ryugu, the astronaut Android, and uh, I was very proud to see the touchdown images. Uh, the uncrewed uh, explorer uh, represented by Hayabusa and Kontori uh, technology, um, reliable technology, what well, the um, crewed and uncrewed uh, technology put together. Uh, we are targeting something uh, else, like uh, Moon and uh, Mars. And JAXA has a vision up until uh, 2040, and pressurized rover has a very important position in uh, JAXA vision. Toyota is looking at the future um, 10 years ahead and uh, doing a lot of uh, things, especially in the area of uh, environment. We are targeting 2050, and uh, this robot project is uh, targeting 2029. But 10 years ahead is not so far away uh, when we develop cars. One cycle of development lasts four years or so. So when we try a new area uh, like space, 10 years is not maybe not enough. So we would like to accelerate our speed and uh, be successful in this project. Um, manned rover mission. If you, do you have any images of uh, manned rover mission? I already mentioned that. Uh, uh, beyond 2029, we have a scenario beyond that. So Luna Rovers is a joint uh, touch point between JAXA and Toyota. And just as Teresa said, the manned space activity requires quality, reliability, And in order for people to come back from the lunar, you need to have a uh, high quality safety and reliability. That is the most essential requirement. And we talked about the uh, lunar environment. There's a lot of radiation, there is temperature. It's extremely rigorous. And it's a mission that uh, needs to traverse the surface of the moon 
for 10,000 kilometers. That is a very uh, challenging climate. In order to achieve this, you know, the fuel cell with high energy efficiency, Toyota's uh, overall uh, technology is something that we have huge expectation on as a Team Japan. So we are uh, looking forward to working with you all. Thank you very much. We, we talked about, you know, we traversed the five continents. So the sixth continent is a with the most uh, stringent uh, environment. That is where we're going to challenge. So to your requirement, it's still a tabletop design. I think there are three main points as we develop. Is the fuel cell technology uh, for long distance travel. We need to uh, develop the hydrogen technology that can be used as a long-term energy source. And secondly, it's unpaved land. We have no idea what the terrain of the moon is. So we need to be versatile to be able to work there. So it has to be a reliable vehicle. And also automatic uh, driving function, auto drive. So, you know, in order to have automatic drive, we have to have lighters, cameras, sensors. But other, that if we have to send that signal to uh, Earth and then, uh, you know, instruct the car, that's impossible. So it has to be totally autonomous. So if this is going to be a very big challenge for us to solve, so uh, as we have uh, a goal 10 years from now, and there are many different milestones that we need to reach, and that is something that we'll be aiming for. And creation of hydrogen society. I think that's a picture we can draw for the future. So the lunar rover, originally, the initial fuel will be transported from Earth, but eventually we want to be able to do local procurement. And so if we can build a hydrogen station on the moon, that would be great. I think uh, Dr. Green uh, presented this this morning, especially in the uh, sort of uh, polar regions that uh, we can probably find water there. So all the nations are aiming toward that, so early 2020s, to aim for the utilization of water resources and uh, exploration missions to these polar regions of Mu uh, is being planned by many countries. And Japan also has its own plan. And in the latter half of 2020, from the water resource, we separate the water uh, into hydrogen and oxygen and then experiment to utilize these uh, gases. So just as uh, Teresa has said, in the future, we will be carrying uh, hydrogen and oxygen on a shuttle. But eventually, we want to be able to reach available water on the moon so that we can use it as an energy source as well as uh, water for human consumption. So we would create on the moon before the Earth a hydrogen society. Yes, that would be great. Water and ice is going to be a very important uh, resource. So moon and then beyond, we have the Mars. It would be the target for manned activities, including mobility. We have to be able to create a recyclable uh, society uh, for a sustainable uh, society. And for that, in Japan, industries, academia, a uh, variety of institutions and uh, organizations are doing a lot of research. So knowledge about hydrogen and technology needs to be merged as one. And Toyota on the Earth 
is already uh, uh, putting a lot of emphasis on the utilization of hydrogen on Earth. Recently, you hear about uh, which is better, electric vehicle or hydrogen fuel vehicle. So, but it's not well understood. Let me explain this. Electric vehicle uh, turn the motor with electricity, and you have the power control unit to control that. So it's a set. And so where do you get the electricity from outside? For that, you need a big battery. Fuel cell is you need the same elements, but it uh, uses hydrogen to generate electricity to turn the motor. So fuel cell uh, car is an electric uh, car, a vehicle. So it depends on the different way that uh, electricity is uh, supplied. So it's not just a uh, difference between using electricity or hydrogen. It's basically C SCV. Did you know that a fuel cell vehicle can clean the air? Did you know that? Actually, in the future, oh, there, it's already available, but this uh, sort of uh, intakes air and then goes through the filter and it uh, uh, it, uh, it gets oxygen and it uh, works uh, combines with hydrogen to generate energy and then uh, the and then exhaust gas is started but the PM 2.5 uh, before and after there it uh, drastic uh, reduction of PM uh, 2.5 after it goes through the vehicle. So by using this, it can actually reduce the amount of uh, uh, the nitrites and uh, sulfates in the exhaust. So not only is it so hydrogen cars uh, can be considered a minus emission rather than positive emission. So in the near future, not only uh, PM 2.5, uh, we would create a filter that only not only uh, adheres to uh, PM 2.5, but also uh, nitrates and uh, sulfates. So this uh, is going to be the driving force for mobility. And since you are here. I have a question to you, ask, Wakata-san. You were the first Japanese commander of the International uh, Space Station. What is important, what is most important for astronaut? I think four or five years ago, I was the commander of the ISS. And Nogu-san and Hoshide-san uh, will be uh, leaving uh, as a commander. In the uh, space development, uh, the balance between uh, competition and collaboration is important. So the team works as one uh, facing the same vector. That is important. So crew, it could be American, Russians, Europeans, Canadians. It's a mixed crew. But in order to maximize the result of the crew, the idea of harmony is extremely important, especially this is a very closed uh, environment, uh, applies in the moon or the Mars, it is important. But Earth is also an enclosed environment. We are all living. So I understand that you were project manager of the Crown Car Design. So just as uh, you know, teamwork is important for development of our uh, car, automobile, I think teamwork is important. You know, the automobile is uh, made out of about 30,000 uh, components, and about two-thirds of those components are supplied from the suppliers, and we only uh, make one-third. And so we need to work with all those suppliers before we can actually uh, put together a car. So for the uh, lunar rover, we are collaborating with Bridgestone, uh, Bridgestone to come with the uh, come up with a tire solution, so you know we used to talk about hometown or home nation, but from the moon looking at the Earth, it's one 
planet. So we should work as a home planet. And I completely agree with you. Teamwork is essential. And today's theme, uh, we said it was we were Team Japan. So home planet, that spirit needs to be valued uh, as we walk uh, towards space exploration. So entire world is part of the team. Since all Japan, we would uh, consolidate uh, our power, but we then uh, take that power for global collaboration. Ten years ago, uh, we think back that we would never have imagined uh, all the technology that is available today. So if you think about 10 years from now, I will probably be tired. So I would be watching uh, from home on a virtual screen, uh, you know, uh, as the lunar rover is traversing the surface of the moon. So I would like to work with you on this project closely together. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, gentlemen.